Today we're going to talk about the table saw. I have four table saws in this shop. Two right here pretty much used for the same thing. And I have a table saw right here with a sliding table attachment. You'll learn about that. Another table saw over there with a uh, uh, dado head cutter on it. And they're all soft stops, so they have a safety feature. Uh, which if you look up sawstop.com and look at their videos, you'll learn about saw stop. We'll talk more about the saw stop later. So first thing I want to do is go over the parts. Okay, on your study guide, A is your table or work surface. That's this area out here. You want to keep it clear. Any stuff you're using or working with will be on the right side of the fence. So my wood, my instructions, push sticks. This is a splitter. You'll learn what that's for in a minute. Um, I have those blades there to talk about in a minute also. So you want to keep your work surface clear over here. Nothing over this area. Everything on that side of the fence. Okay, B is your blade guard. This is the blade guard. It should be used at all times when possible. Um, I will show you how to take the blade guard off and adjust it in a minute. And when you don't use the guard, why we would not use the guard. Okay, C is the fence. This is the fence. Fence, you lift this handle, you move it back and forth. There is a scale right here with measurements and a red line. So if it wants up eight inches, Put it right on the 8 inch, lock it down, that is 8 inches. Okay? So that is the fence. D is your tilt wheel. That's this wheel here on the side. As I tilt this wheel, it tilts the blade at an angle. So you can see that the blade is going at an angle. So if we want to do a miter of a long piece, we can do that. Whenever you do that, when you're done, you want to tilt it back to zero. Okay? And we will talk about that in a minute. Let me get it back. Okay. And so that is D, the tilt wheel. E is your power switch. This is the power switch. Okay. We have several power switches. This is the one you use. It's a paddle. Pull it towards you. She comes on. Turn it off. She goes off. Because this is a saw stop, as long as that light's blinking, you cannot turn it back on. If you get green and red marks, that's an error. Turn it off, let the computer reset, and then you can turn it off. There's another switch right here. If you were going to change a blade, do some other adjustment on it, and you felt more, felt more comfortable, you can turn that switch off. That kills the power to this switch and the computer. The machine can't come off. Okay? So if you turn this back on, the machine's going to do a self-check. You saw that red light. The computer says it's good to go for the safety mechanism. You can turn it back on. Turn it on. Okay, so that's your power switch. Next on your paper is F, the tilt scale. You saw this a little bit earlier. This is your tilt scale down here. It goes 0 to 45. There is a red pointer. So if I want something at 22 and a half degrees, I crank the tilt wheel, at the same time you can see the tilt scale. I go to 21, 22 and a half, and that's the tilt scale. When you're done, again, you always put it back to zero. So you crank the tilt wheel, looking at the tilt scale, and you get it back to zero. Okay, so that is your tilt scale. G is your plate height adjustment. That's this wheel on the front of the machine. If I lift the guard up here, you can see the height of that blade. You can bring that way up, okay? Why would we bring it that high up? Well, we better be cutting something that thick, otherwise it needs to be lower. I'm gonna keep that blade lower. We'll talk the exact height of the blade here in a minute. And then the last thing is H, your miter gauge. Your miter gauge stores right here. It fits in a slot right here. Do you remember what a miter is? A miter is at an angle. You can actually loosen this knob and turn this at an angle. We could take a block of wood and we could, this is at 30 degrees, we could cut a 30 degree angle on that block. Or go back to zero, lock it in, and I could cross cut a piece square 90 degrees. We don't use the miter gauge that much on these machines because we can do that much easier, safer on a miter saw. 
but if you only had a table saw to work with, that's how you would do that. Okay, so Meyer gauge, that's H. All right, put, always put the stuff back where it belongs. And we'll move on to the study guide questions. Number one says raise the saw blade from blank higher than the thickness of the wood be cut. That would be a quarter of an inch. Okay? So, put the board next to the blade, obviously with it off, and you would want to lower that blade so you have just about the teeth sticking up. That's a quarter inch. That's a good height for safety reasons. If you get your hand in there while the machine is running, it's only going to cut into you a quarter of an inch, which is not good, but is better than all the way through. But you got to remember when the board's gone on here, that's sticking up about an inch. Okay, so we want it a quarter inch higher than the thickness of the wood. Number two says when changing blades, make sure the machine is off. If you come up here, you know you need a different blade. You want to make sure the machine is off. You don't want to see. Uh, you want to look there and make sure it is not running. Number three, hold the wood to be sawed against the fence or miter gauge. Okay, so if you come up here to cut something, this board needs to stay tight to the fence. You don't want to see a gap in there like that. Okay, so that it guides it straight through. Or, if we're using the miter gauge, you would squeeze it tight to the miter gauge as you're cutting through. Okay, something has to guide the wood. What you do not do, and I'll repeat, you do not just come up to a table saw and try to cut something like this. You're going to get a kickback. Okay, all it takes is a little more pressure with your right hand than your left hand. It's going to go into the blade. It's going to come right back in. So never freehand cut. That's called freehand cutting. Okay, you want to make sure you have the fence or miter gauge guiding the board. Never freehand cut. All right, we want to keep the saw blade guard in place at all times when possible. We say all times when possible because occasionally we have to move it, okay? Our rule in the shop is if we're cutting something less than two inches wide, we need to remove that guard because there's not enough space for the push stick to go through. And then that creates other issues. So when we're getting up really close to something here, there's no space here for the push stick. So we have to remove the guard and use the machine without the guard. So to do that, you lift this up, and right here there's a little tab. Take the collar out. You reach down in here and there's a lever that you pull up, and the whole guard comes off. Then we take the splitter, we put it in the slot where the guard was. We push this lever back down. There's a little door we close. We take the collar and put it back on there. So now if we're going to cut something, let's say an inch and a quarter, no guard, but now we can safely push it through with a push stick and get it all the way through. Okay, number five says make all adjustments when the machine is at a dead stop. Okay, so you don't turn the machine off and start adjusting stuff while it's coasting to a stop. You want to make sure it's completely stopped. Okay, um, so if you're going to tilt the wheel, use the minor gauge, any kind of adjustment, machine is off. There is an exception to that if you're cutting something big and the fence is over here, farther than four inches from the blade, then you can uh, adjust the fence. But if you're going to come within four inches of the blade, the machine needs to be off and at a dead stop. Number six, have the teacher check all special setups. Okay. What is a special setup? A special setup is something you've never done before. Okay? So first time you come over here and you set something up, and before you cut the board, you should have me check it to make sure you're set up right. Um, using the miter gauge could be a, set, a special setup. It just depends on what you're doing. Once you've done that before, you're good. Okay? But special setups, first time setups, first time you've done something, I should check. Number seven says use a push stick. Whenever your fingers are going to be within four inches of the blade. So we have our four inch rule in the shop. So it's not the size of the wood you're cutting, it's where your hands are. Okay, let's pretend we're going to cut this board. If this was five inches, you'd say, oh, I don't need a push stick. Yes, you do, because when your hand's on there pushing, your hand's going to be ending up being closer than four inches. So you would use a push stick for that, okay? It's not just this hand, but it's your left hand, okay? You don't use a push stick here and keep pushing 
the scrap piece with your thumb here, you're within four inches. This hand goes away. Okay, and you push that on through. Okay, so whenever your hands or fingers are going to be within four inches, you either move your left hand or you have a push stick in your right hand. Okay, don't use a push stick in your left hand. Okay, that's not good either. When you're using the table saw, there is a kickback zone. That kickback zone is between the blade and the fence, and it's in this direction. Okay? Kickbacks can be thrown back, the board can be thrown back with great force. So you do not want to stand in the kickback zone. You don't want others to be standing in the kickback zone. You don't want to wait to use a machine in the kickback zone. Stay to the sides. Okay? So you always stand, when we're ripping solid wood, we stand to the left of the blade. Okay? To my left, your right, and you stand here so that if the board kicks back, it does not hit you. If you're standing here, bad news, okay? If you're standing here, you have a tendency to push the board into the blade, and we don't want to do that. We want to push the board into the fence and let the fence guide it through the blade. Okay, so we stand to the left. Now, if you're cutting big sheets of plywood, this rule doesn't uh, work because you're going to have to be over here pushing the piece. But plywood's a little bit different. You're going to have both hands on there. You're cutting bigger pieces, easier to control. Number nine, wood to be ripped should have a true straight edge. So you have a good edge here, that's why we joint the boards before we rip them, because you want that good edge against this fence, so you have a nice tight fit there. That keeps the board straight. If you had a bad edge, the board would want to move as you were going through, it could cause a kickback or an injury. So we want a good straight edge, we want the good straight edge to the fence. Also, the board needs to lay flat on the table. If you have a board that's cupped or twisted or warped and it wants to rock as you're cutting, that can also cause problems. Okay, so if you have a board that's warped or cupped, come talk to me about the best way to process it. Number 10, when helping cut large pieces of wood, just hold the wood and let the main operator push the board through the machine. So, in my junior, senior year, you guys will be cutting up some sheets of plywood, four foot by eight foot sheets, Okay, you may be helping with that. You may just be standing over here helping hold the end while the main operator is pushing it through. You do not grab it, you do not pull it, you do not push it. You just hold it so that it doesn't tilt down. Okay, and you just walk with it. That's all you do. Sometimes you'll be on the end over there doing that. But you just hold it. Number 11, never use the miter gauge and the fence together for through cuts. What we mean by that is if you want a four inch piece, you don't set this at four inches, use the miter gauge, push this across, and cut it. If you do that, this piece is going to be between a stationary thing, the fence, and a moving thing, the blade, and it's going to kick. Okay? So you don't use these two together if you're cutting something completely in half, or through a through cut, all the way through. So if you wanted to do it, you could do this, and then move the fence, or you put a mark on your board, Line your board up with it, turn the machine on, make the cut. Okay? But don't use the miter gauge and fence together for through cuts. Number 12, do not force the wood into the blade to be cut. Okay? Let the machine do the work. So, if you're cutting, it should cut very easy. Um, the machines are designed to cut well. If it's not cutting easy, there's something wrong. And if you force it, if you put more force and pressure towards it, and all of a sudden it goes, your hands are going where you don't want them to be. So don't force it. Push it through, let it cut at its pace. You'll learn that pace the more wood you cut. If it's not cutting easy, hold on the wood, turn the machine off, wait for it to stop, and then come get me and, and just let me know the board's not cutting easy and I'll come see what the problem is. A lot of time it's the wood grain. Sometimes it could be put the blade on backwards or something else is sticking up in the way and not allowing it to go. So just don't force wood through any machine. 13. Never reach over the saw blade. So let's say you cut a board and, and when you're done it's going to look something like this. Okay. You can reach this way and get that piece. You would not touch that. It's not safe. What you don't do is you don't reach over with your left hand to get that. Don't cross this. Whether the guard's on there or not. I don't have the guard back on here so you can see what's going on. Don't cross Never reach over the saw blade. That is not safe. Number 14. Never use a stick or your hands to clear pieces away from the blade when this machine is running. 
Okay, so you just made a cut, you turn it off, the machine's running. Don't use a stick to try to knock that out of the way. There's no reason to do that. You're done with your cut, turn the machine off, put your push stick down, wait for everything to stop. Then you can get these pieces, these scrap pieces away from the blade safely. You don't use your fingers, remember the four inch rule, you don't use a stick to hit them. You could end up hitting the blade, hitting the board into the blade, causing it to kick back. Number 15, remove all special setups when you are done. So what's a special setup? Well, um, let's say you raise the blade really high like this to cut something thick. Don't leave that blade that high. So you would lower the blade back down to the normal operating height before you leave. If you use the miter gauge when you're done with that, you would put that back. Other things you would do is you'd pick up your scrap pieces, your uh, plans, anything like that, you put them back, take them with you. You don't leave stuff on the table. You don't leave the blade tilted. Nothing like that. Number 16. When you're cutting a board, it's very important that you push it all the way through and clear it out the back side of the machine. When you cut it and you have a scrap, you have another piece, when you get right about here, it's going to cut those into two pieces. You don't stop. You take, that's not going to matter, but this one, if you take the pressure off that, that's still spinning and it's between the fence and the blade, it's going to come back at you. You got to make sure you push that piece all the way through and clear the blade. This piece isn't tight between anything, it's fine, it can stay there. Remember, don't reach in to move that, wait till the machine comes to a complete stop. Number 17, when setting up a dado head cutter, Make sure you space the chippers evenly and properly. We will do that on the other table saw. I'll show you what a data head cutter is at that time. Number 18, the four most common saw blades that we use in this shop. Okay, first one would be a rip blade. A rip blade looks like this. Has a bunch of large teeth. That's a rip blade, okay? Used to rip with the grip. Then we have a crosscut blade. Crosscut blade looks like this, a bunch of small teeth used for crosscutting, going across the grain. Then we have a combination blade. Combination blade looks like this. Let me raise it up a little bit. You know it's a combination blade because of these gaps. It has four or five teeth and a gap. Teeth and a gap. Teeth and a gap. That's a combination blade. Combination blade you can rip and crosscut with. Okay? So combination blade. And then the fourth one is the data head cutter, which is, I will talk about on another machine here in a minute. And then also we have blades on our miter saws. Um, they're specifically for the miter saws. Number 19, when changing a blade, loosen it up by pulling the wrench towards the front of the machine. That's towards you. You're at the front of the machine. I will demonstrate that with the data head cutter in a minute. And number 20, always concentrate. You cannot be cutting on this and thinking about other things. You need to know where you're standing. Do I need a push stick? Is the guard correct? Uh, what size am I cutting? You need to be thinking about all that stuff, focused on the machines, not thinking about other things when you use your tape.